Uh, it's going up inside. Uh -huh. uh, okay, Brian. Oh, well, you know, stuff happens. Oh my God, that's so funny. <laughs> Can make a copper basket. <laughs> right, yeah. Okay, making English ivy baskets today. Um, there's two different growth patterns that ivy has. There's um, vertical and horizontal. So uh, ivy that's growing horizontally on a wall or up a tree, often where I'm in Oregon, I'm harvesting around trees. It's all over the forest floor. Um, super invasive in Oregon. Not so invasive here, which is kind of nice. But the difference between the horizontal and the vertical makes a big difference in basket weaving. If it's growing vertically, it's going to be brittle. And that's not good for baskets at all. If it's growing horizontally, and this is a little confusing because this looks horizontal, but what's happened is it's grown up and then wanted to grow horizontal, but it, it didn't have a horizontal place, so it's growing back down. So um, on a tree, you wouldn't have this. It would just go up, 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 up. Um, but this is more what you would find on the ground, and it's supple, which is what we need for basket weaving. I like the idea of basket weaving a lot because they're a very ancient kind of container made with natural materials. And we want to get away from using things like plastic and metal so I know the ladies down at the lake, or maybe the guys too, make baskets out of lake reeds, but nobody around here makes them out of this. Now these are more decorative, they're not quite as strong, but apparently they're good for teaching people about baskets. So uh, we're going to start with these and we're also going to investigate any other kind of plant we can make baskets out of. Now in this case I have English ivy growing all over this casita. Now it's not actually invasive here, but in this particular spot it's in a spot I don't want it. So it's sort of invasive in a sense. It's growing into the roof and then there's animals living in the roof and ants and bugs and who knows what. So I'm going to pull all that off there and hopefully a lot of it will be useful uh, for basket making. I also want to save some of it because I'd like to use a lot of it for cuttings when the rains come. Because uh, since it isn't you know directly invasive here, I want lots more English ivy uh, for whatever use we can come up with. I'm risking my life for basketry. I actually don't like going up on high places at all. These are flowers of the English ivy. I have not seen these before. And one of the reasons I haven't thought English ivy is that, in, that invasive is because it doesn't spread very quickly at all. I mean, ones I put in 12 years ago have barely survived. However, if the birds eat those seeds and spread them, then some of those seeds are going to end up in places where English ivy wants to grow really well. And I haven't seen a lot of English ivy around here, so I want to make sure I'm not the guy that introduced an invasive plant to the area. So it's a little tempting to get rid of it entirely, or at least keep a very, very close watch on it, uh, to, to have a little bit of fear about what I'm introducing to the environment. Somebody can stay and brought it over because it's pretty. Uh -huh. yeah, it's, really it's a long one. <laughs> More. So, uh, Willow doesn't, uh, <clears throat> sorry, Willow is what I normally make baskets with. Uh, ivy does not need, the nice thing about ivy is uh, you can harvest it and make a basket the same day. Um, mostly they're like a, an altar basket, something um, that's not uh, more utilized for carrying things as being something that um, you're going to put something small in. Um, do you want to grab that ivy basket that I played with? Um, a, a few weeks back. Uh, <clears throat> I like a lot about ivy. <clears throat> it's just you can harvest it and uh, get it ready to make a basket and make a basket all in one day. Often five hours or something like that. 
this is one that I played with when I first got here. It's very dry now. Um, not sturdy, like you could, it wouldn't be a market basket. It's just not um, sturdy enough. I'd never made this style of basket before, so um, I was just playing with ivy because it's what I had. And um, so you could make a lot of containers, but they're a container that you would place somewhere and put something in, not something that you would carry around a lot. The ivy, to prepare it for making a basket, you just simply pull the leaves off. So I like to have gloves and just pull them off. That is ready, already prepared to make into a basket. So um, you do this with, I don't know, uh, a couple dozen strands about that length and you could have a nice small little basket. Um, one thing to know about ivy is some people are allergic to it. Um, I'm not, but I always tend to wear gloves when I'm doing things. Um, but it's something to be aware of. Uh, I can't remember. Um, it's not just like the roughness or whatever. There's, there's actually something that people have allergic reactions to ivy occasionally. Uh, we are removing the leaves from the ivy from the big pile from the side of the casita. It's very simple. Um, just slide down the ivy with your hands and the leaves come off. Tender, supple is what you want. Elements, we're going to do two elements to start with and it's, um, it's called pairing. Um, when there's three or more, it's called whaling, which is what I use in the in the willow often. Um, and it just makes a nice tight weave. If it's a, a weave over, under, over, under, just like that, um, it's not as strong as this. So this, you weave one behind in front, and then you're, you're um, exchanging it for the next one behind in front. Mm -hmm. and, and they're actually twisting. You can see there's a bit of a twist mm -hmm. there. Okay. Um, yeah, so that's that's the weave that we're doing. <laughs> I think we should all have some chocolate or espresso so. beans. <laughs> <laughs> the energy uh, and motivation. Yeah. yeah, so... So I have a kid, and I've been around a lot of kids with um, sticks and things like that. I have a term that I use, safety circle. If I can touch you with something that extends my body, or my body itself, and I'm like dancing around like crazy, then <clears throat> you're in my safety circle. And the same for somebody else, if someone else has something and they're spinning around, then I don't wanna enter their safety circle, meaning it won't be safe if I get too close to them necessarily. So I use that with basketing because there's a point in time before the uprights go up that um, your safety circle gets bigger. If I'm doing willow, it can be, easily six foot, 10 feet around before I do my uprights up. It can be maybe our second basket or whatever, but you wanna have a handful of maybe, um, let's see, so we're gonna do three by three to start with, and those will be our uprights. We want them to be um, a little bit thicker than our weavers that go around, um, and we want them to all be pretty similar. So you're gonna pick six out of this that are pretty similar <clears throat> and, um, and that's what you will start with and for your uprights. And then you will pick um, weavers that don't have to be quite as um, similar. And I think that's gonna give me more than enough for my uprights. So let's all individually get Six that are similar, I'm gonna think maybe two feet long. So like a couple of these, you know, can give me more than one So this is upright. at least two right here. Yeah, that's gonna give you at least two, yes. And um, you know, the, the natural shape of the ivy, like this, you know, that'll help you make kind of a, what I call a wonky basket, which can be really cool. It has its own, um, you know, it has its own style, sure. right? So it's not necessarily perfectly like it round or it takes its own shape. So, you know, 
that can be something you pay attention to if you want more organic or less organic. And let's all kind of sit in a circle a little bit out of the sun. Um, sun will make it dry out and not nice. last as long. Uh, the nice thing about ivy is you can get a bucket of warm water and put it in there for an hour, you know, if it goes dry and, and use it right away. Whereas willow, it takes days and days to get it, um, you know, from the dry again. So I was just going to cut these basically in half. Yeah, and have yeah, yeah. That's perfect. Six. So whatever size basket <laughs> you want to do, um, one thing to pay attention to, so we're going to do baskets that are about like this, you know, and it could be smaller or a little wider, you know, depending on what it feels like for you. But the, on the top, we're going to have to have a little bit of bend over to do a rim, right? Um, you can always add an upright next to an upright if you don't have enough space. But just think about that. If you want your basket to be this big, you're going to need your, your thing to be like four inches longer than that. Right, so if you're making something small, um, if you're making something big, you're gonna have to go even bigger. I, I recommend going smaller to start with, and then you can always go bigger next time when you're comfortable with all the techniques. <clears throat> um, so I'm wondering, like, make sure you, you can get a, a bend on whatever you're using for your upright, right? Um, so that you can do the um, the rim, like that's a bend without a break. Um, there's also the technique, I don't have my knives with me, but I was mentioning to you earlier that you can take a pocket knife and um, like there's a break there. So this is a little bit more brittle. So if you take a knife and go vertical with it and, and um, <clears throat> vertical and twist, then you can typically get a bend in that spot without having a break. So that's a technique that we can use to do that. So it might be that we actually grabbed a little bit thicker than, than is gonna work for us, but um, we have lots of ivy, so we can just play and see what works. So why do you guys wanna learn how to make baskets? I want to make baskets because I think it would be a very useful skill um, and you can make things to carry anything in. So yeah, that's it. The same thing? Uh, in Spanish? Yeah. Quiero hacer un basket porque tengo un gato enorme. Entonces quiero aprender con algo pequeño para después hacer algo muy grande para el gato. <laughs> Is this a good size? Sure. Yeah. Your basket will be, you know, like four inches shorter than the, yeah, yeah, mm-hmm, okay. sure. So this ivy is really thick. I'm actually used to working with ivy that's quite a bit thinner. So we might find that we get started and, oh, we want to go even thinner. Um, when I first learned how to um, use English ivy in baskets, my teacher said that if it's in the sun, it's going to grow thicker, much thicker. Um, the supple stuff here is about the size I'm used to being my thick ivy back home in Oregon. So it'll be interesting to see what, you know, how it, how it works for us. So we all have six. Yeah. These are our uprights and we are going to cross them just like this. Okay. Just on top of each other. This is probably the most awkward part of making a basket, whether it's English ivy or the willow baskets that I make. Um, when I do willow, um, we cut a hole through three of these and put them inside. But these are um, so flexible and so thin that it just doesn't make sense to do that. So it's a different technique for willow baskets. So it's a little trickier to get started on these because when you have the hole and there's three going inside, they stay in place. <laughs> We're going to have to make them stay in place until we get our weaving really going. Okay. Mm -hmm. okay. Focus. This one. okay. 
Mm -hmm. Okay. So we want to make sure they're all, you know, reasonably equal, right, on the ends. And then I'm going to take a super supple one. Um, often the thinnest one that I have will be the one that I start with because we don't want it to break. It's, it's going to be um, the only time that we're wrapping uh, not quite 360, but over 180, if that makes sense. So could you use like a string or something else for that? Absolutely. Basketry, you can use anything that's flexible. Rope, twine. Um, there are so many different kinds of baskets. I've, I've seen baskets online now on Etsy, and they're actually quite beautiful, and they're made out of plastic bags. So people are recycling plastic bags to make baskets. Um, yeah, anything that's flexible. Go, go. Go, come here. He's like, I'm not going anywhere. Go, go. I'm very happy here. Hi, puppy. <laughs> weave over all three instead of individually to start with. Okay, so I am wrapping my supple one around three of them. Do you see that? Yeah. So they're both going in the same direction. And I'm right-handed. I'm going to the right. That's how I'll be showing you. I apologize if you're left-handed. <laughs> Off the set, Coco. Exactly. Mm -hmm. So they're both coming up, right? So um, you're always going to weave the one on the left next, right? So I'm going to take the one on the left, go over those three. The, the one on the right is coming up there though, right? Right? And this one is gonna go down, under, and come up over here. And I'm gonna turn it. So it looks exactly the same. This one's coming up here. Um, so you're going to, are you left-handed? I'm right-handed. Okay. So um, you're going that way and I'm going this way. Okay, so. Like this. Uh-huh. And so this one goes down here and comes up on this side. Like this. Exactly. Yep. Okay. So now we're in the same spot. Yeah. Okay, so I'm going to keep this one up. <clears throat> this one is going to go down. And come, so Down. it's going to go this way. This one. This one is going to go this way, mm -hmm. and under these three, and come up. <clears throat> that like this. Yeah, you, you got it. Yep. Okay, so turn it so it's just easier. <clears throat> so I'm coming up here, right. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you're going to be turning it. Like no, the other way. Yeah. yeah. Right? Okay. Uh -huh. And, and so down. Mm -hmm. Oops, I'm getting grass woven in. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm going down and up over here. Which one then? Yep, this, this, this one. one. And up over here? Uh-huh. Okay. Up. Yep, yep. And then do that so that you have two mm -hmm. in each spot. So um, so this one comes up, mm -hmm. and then that one gets woven. Yep. Okay. Like that? Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. And then comes up. <laughs> okay. So now you're going to add a new one, mm -hmm. um, which is tricky because we're not quite all the way around. Ideally, we get all the way around a few times. So let's try to find um you know what i would you know what i would do because of where we're at <clears throat> that isn't quite long enough you want it to be stable before you add a new one mm -hmm. so i would undo that okay <clears throat> and um we're so we it like that. Uh -huh. <clears throat> so this is your the other way this is your 
up. Yep, and then that one. Yeah. Okay. So so it's locking it in place. Mm -hmm. is what it's what it's doing. Okay. okay. So you've got one all the way around. You're gonna do it again so that you have two in each spot. Do you know when I? Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. That there's one in each spot. Yeah. You want two in each spot. Okay. So we're going till we have two over the three in each uh, spot that the spokes come out. They come apart as easily. Okay. So now what you want to do is you're going to do the exact same weave that you've been doing, but where? So I'm I'm ending. I've got two coming up, right? That's the second one here, right? So I'm going to start opening these up and I'm going to go in between each and every one, right? So the one on the left is going to go down and then come up, right? And then the next one is going to go down, so over, under. This one? Nope. So oh, yeah. it, it has to, I mean, yes, and this one comes up first. Mm -hmm. That one goes over here okay. and under here. Over, over here. But this stays here. Mm -hmm. uh -huh. And then down here. Under here. Under here. Uh huh. Okay. And then up. And then up. Okay. Yes. And then that one and goes then this one. Uh -huh. over this one over this and one. under this one. Mm -hmm. So over this one, and then Let me see where you... Right here. Okay, but but this one actually, that's your... Wait, move your other hand so I can see what you've got going. Okay, so this one is not woven yet. Unweave this one. Uh-huh. This one comes up. So this one goes over three, under one. Under one. Yes. Like that. Uh-huh. Okay. And then the next one, so just leave that one here, mm -hmm. and this one goes over one. Over this one? Over one. Over one here. Uh-huh. Under one. And you just kind of, you know, spread these with your fingers. And then this one goes over one. And it's already kind of over it, yeah. right? And Naturally. Then under. And then under. Yep. Like that. Yeah, you guys are, you guys are basket weavers. Mm -hmm. Yeah. <laughs> and then you just keep doing just it. Just keep doing yeah, it. Yeah, okay. just keep doing it. Until you're getting close to the end. Ideally, you don't end both of them at the same time. You want to end them slightly separate. Like mine here is slightly separate. Um, I might even end this one a little earlier. You'll do the same thing because you're getting closer. He's got a little more space on his. Right? And they get tender and break too at the end. Okay. So do the sides of the willow baskets. I'm doing whaling, which is this weave with more, three or more, and randing, which is um, typically I'm weaving 24 at one time. I put 24 weavers in the basket, mm -hmm. and I re each time you do a round, each one of those gets woven once. So it's way more complicated. <laughs> <laughs> to start, this is like the, the, the best way to this start the doing best. baskets, yeah. So I am running out of weaver, so I need to add a new one. And so um, I don't want it, you know, we have really long pieces, which seems like, oh, ideal for weaving. But if it's so long that it's getting in the way every time you go over under, it's not worth doing, right? You want to stop. I'm going to tell you something else in a second. Um, and so I'm going to add a new one. Um, and I think this is a pretty good length. You know, that's maybe two and a half feet. I wouldn't go much longer than that. But um, yeah, I want it long enough that I don't have to change every every two times I go around. I want to go around a few times before I change to a new one. Um, and so when you add one, and I'm going to um, 
just do this for the video. We'll do this again and again. So this one is the one that I'm adding to. It's getting um, to the point where it's probably going to break if I keep weaving it. So I put that one down so it does the over, but instead of doing the under and coming back up, I'm going to leave it down. Mm -hmm. And you just put another one where it would have come out. And the next time you weave your next one, it's going to lock it in place so you don't have to hold it. So that one goes over and under. And then that's done. The new one's in there. So you don't have a twist anymore. Mm -hmm. So you need to pay attention and you can, you can either take it out. Mm -hmm. It's not going to affect the basket to leave it, but you want the twist because the twist is the locking that helps see how they're going next to each other here Yeah. and see how mine are twisting. Uh -huh. Do you see the difference mm -hmm. between that? And so what the difference is, I'm going to go back just a smidge. Sure to here um, so you can see. So this one has to stay in yeah. and this one goes over, under. And these are the two and that you, are twisting. And yeah. yeah, and so you're just, you're doing uh, so that then you're do weaving this one and mm -hmm. then you're weaving this one and then you're weaving this one. You have to have this one come into the center mm -hmm. and then do the next one over, under, right? And then bring it into the center. And then this one goes outside over under. Does that make sense? It does. Okay, yes. great. Yeah, so you did the same thing I just described here, mm -hmm. where you are weaving them next to each other. So, um, but right now, you've, you've, you've got it. This, you got back to the twist, mm -hmm. right? So this, this stays in the center, mm -hmm. you hold it there, and then this one goes over under. Mm -hmm. And then that stays to the center, and that one goes on the outside of it. Okay. Now, this is in the center, and this. So you just, th that's not the right way. So mm -hmm. go back, mm -hmm. just, just like that, pull this one up. Okay, so this one has to go, I'm trying to figure out the vocabulary that's going to make sense. So this one has to be pulled to the center, but under this one. Under this one. Under this one. Under? Yes. Okay. Yes. And then do that one. Mm-hmm. Uh-huh. And pull it up. Yep. Mm -hmm. Uh-huh. And this is? On the outside. That was bright. That was perfect. Nope. Okay. Uh-huh. Yes. So on the outside. And okay. then under. Uh, and then <laughs> uh -huh. this at the center that stays uh -huh. Uh -huh. and this under this one yes yes and then and now I you're going to want to add a one. new one yeah because it's breaking I so I would actually go one. back one to add because because yeah. you're you want it to be in between the three it'll stay better right now. When you get farther along, that won't matter. But um, if you go back to where it's coming out right here, mm -hmm. it's gonna lock, it's gonna lock there better. Okay. And then when you do the next one, it's uh -huh. gonna lock it in place. Okay, so this It is goes gonna... over one, under one. This is under? Yes, yes. Mm -hmm. And yes. Uh -huh. another here, Not huh? quite yet, I Not would do it because you don't want it to happen right here. Okay. Like I, that was the same as before for just right now. Mm -hmm. So you just kind of hold this this one mm -hmm. with your fingers under here. <laughs> Get that back in there. Mm -hmm. And so just hold your fingers there. Mm -hmm. Yes. Uh-huh. And then this one goes over one, under one. I see. Yes, yes. Mm -hmm. you, that's exactly right. And then this. Uh-huh. Go under that. Yes. Uh huh. And then now might be a good time to add the next one. So that one goes over one. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. And where would it come out? If it went under one, where would where would the one that's down come out? This one's gonna stay here. Mm hmm. And 
We need another one. Uh huh. This is going to here. Yes. One in the place. Over one. Over one. No, that one stays there. You're okay. leaving this one. Okay. <laughs> so over one. Over one. Under one. Yeah. Yeah. Here. And this one. Yeah, on the outside. See? Do you see the difference? So, um, with this particular basket, we're not doing a separate base. Our, our base is just going to be woven into our sides. So, you, th there's a lot of ways that one can do that. We're kind of winging it right now because it's been a long time since I've done that. But you can pull all your uprights up. And as we do that, I realize maybe we should have started a little longer. You can always cut, but you can't add. Um, or not at this point in the basket. Um, and, and we wanna start encouraging these to go up at some point. And so if you have even um, a third of them and tie them so they don't get in the way with the weave, that's one way that one can do it. Um, we're, we're gonna figure out what we're gonna tie that with or do that with at some point soon. <laughs> And if you trim that fork, it won't happen every single time you weave. You know what I mean? get to make you know a basket <laughs> Cause yeah. with a lot of things like this that's how I am until uh -huh. all of a sudden it makes sense uh -huh. it's like kind of like riding a so bike or learning, really for you then. learning something new and then I'll, yeah otherwise it's like dyslexic like uh -huh. I don't know what I'm doing and then as soon as you start getting you're like oh okay well and this is something to be out. very easily dyslexic on yeah but you got I mean it's fun you know you, yeah. you definitely got it it's fun. so I I feel like I'm getting to the point where I need to start doing my rim or I'm not going to have enough room for my rim. So I'm getting to the point where I need to kind of stop weaving or I'm not going to have enough um, of my uprights to do a rim. And we can do a super, super simple rim where it just goes behind one, but I like to kind of go behind one and in, in front of another one. So um, I'm going to, this is going to be my last weaver and then, uh, I'll wait till you guys get to that point. <laughs> <laughs> So I'm going to go behind this one. Um, we're doing a new weave because she's got room and it's called whaling. So I'm going to put three in at a time and we're going to go behind and stuff down and then come out. And I'm going to do that three times. So we're kind of hiding our ends inside. And then the weave is going to be in front of two and behind one and you see it comes out one over from the last one. Okay. So you just do that over and over. This one is gonna go in front of, this counts as one. Uh-huh. One, two, and uh, behind, behind one. Uh-huh. Okay. Like that. And then this in uh -huh. front yep. and behind this. Yes, yes. Okay. 
Mm -hmm. I'm in your safety circle. I'm <laughs> <laughs> in my safety circle. Exactly, you got it. Okay. And in a little bit, you'll see the difference mm -hmm. in the weave, right? Okay. So you're twisting nice. three instead of twisting two. Oh. Right here. Uh, no, oh. you want to go okay. over here, or it'll pop out. But this one, you want to go right there. Thank yeah. You. Yeah. Okay. So, Violetta is ready to do her rim, mm -hmm. and so the, you want to find one that's pretty uh, flexible. Like for me, you can feel this one, mm -hmm. it's pretty flexible. Yeah. And you want that, pick one like that, your most flexible one. Maybe this one. Okay. So you want to start to yeah. the right of that one. That's going to be the last one that you do. You want that flexibility to be able to finish. Oh, yeah. Your, your, the basket. So start to the right Easy. of that. And you're going to take it and go in front of one and then behind the next one. Mm -hmm. And then just leave it there. But you want it to go behind. So you can trim it there. Here? Yeah, in, yeah, in the middle. Yeah. And you, don't, you won't necessarily have to trim all of them. And then the next one to the right, so this one, you want to do again in front of one and behind. And so that one you won't have to trim because it's already short enough. Mm -hmm. uh -huh. Yeah, it's thicker than the next yeah. one. So that one you want to go, I'll hold it for you, in front and behind. Okay. Yeah. And you're going to do that all the way around? Front. Uh-huh. Behind. Yeah. But you've gone far enough. You can trim them later. <laughs> <laughs> In front and behind. And this is uh, uh, again, not to... Uh-huh. I would go ahead and do this one. Mm-hmm. Because... That's the next one that you're doing. Mm -hmm. Uh huh. Yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. Okay. So this is almost the last. Mm -hmm. I would go ahead and um, trim. If you move your finger, mm -hmm. just so that we have. Uh, we do the front behind. Front and behind. Uh -huh. And I'm gonna go ahead and take that. <laughs> there. Yeah. yeah. In front. Uh -huh. And the behind is this one, right? So you just, I would just stuff it down there for now, mm -hmm. right? So now we're at the very end, the last one, mm -hmm. right? So you're going to go in front, turn it towards you so you can see it. So this is the one you want to go in front of, right? So this is the one I want to go in front of. Mm -hmm. So I'm going to, this is the flexible one, ideally, that you can kind of bend around and poke in there so that it goes, so it's this one here. Mm -hmm. That's the upright. You can kind of see it. Yeah, exactly. You got it. Okay. Uh-huh. Pull it all the way in. And other than trimming, you now have a finished basket. <laughs> and then you can trim off. So these are the baskets you guys made in the workshop? Yes, I made this basket. Yo hice esta. And Sherilyn, who taught us how to weave, made that one. Fue muy fácil, al principio un poco difícil porque no sabíamos cómo empezar, pero después de empezar fue creciendo y creciendo, ya está. Exactly. It's like once you started, once you got it started, it came together and then you could form it and make it into a bowl. It was a lot of fun and not too difficult. Not too difficult. No. We recommend no. it yeah. at all.